Hello everyone and welcome to Respectful Dave. Today I'm going to play a game and your job as a viewer is to think, well, what would I play in this position? Maybe t from time to time, pause your video, um, compare what you think with what I think, and then we can all learn. We're going to play D4, occupying the center. We're playing against Marius 7152. Good luck, Marius. Knight C3. We're going to develop our pieces. Knights and bishops first, as usual. We're going to play... Mm, I'm going to play e3. Now that my my bishop is outside the pawn chain, e3 is not such a bad move. Before, maybe e3 is not such a good move because this bishop is inside the pawn chain. That's not the case. a6, my opponent is saying, no, I don't want any of this knight b5 stuff. I'm going to develop my knights. So now this knight on c3 is a little bit misplaced because I would like to play c3 to support my center. So I'm going to play knight, bishop d3. And against knight c6, I'm going to play knight e2. The only worry I have is that knight b4 is getting my bishop pair. But what I'm trying or what I'm planning to do is to play something like a3 or just wait until my opponent takes and take with a c-pawn. Maybe the, the c-file is going to be useful for my rook. So I evaluate that. Evaluating in chess is saying, well, concluding pretty much. I evaluate that as interesting. So it's not as bad as, as it might look. Queen d6, I expected that move. It's just attacking a knight. So you shouldn't be scared of this kind of moves. I can play knight e2, but I want this knight on d3 in the future. So I'm going to try to stay in it there. So I'm going to play queen d2. Might, might, I might be walking into some knight e4 stuff, though. Hmm. Hard to, hard to judge. Okay, my opponent castled. And now I'm going to play rook e1. Now, in this position, this is called Karlsbad structure. And this structure is, I want to occupy e5. So... Black's, Black's plan is something called minority attack with a5, b4. That's what Black is doing now. And my plan is to occupy the center and, if possible, create some sort of kingside attack. So that's what, I'll, what I will be trying to do now. I could play a3 to stop b4, but that wouldn't, that wouldn't be... That would be kind of um, just um, procrastinating a little bit. So after a5. Now, the reason why I ended up doing it anyway is because after... After a5, um, let's say black does get b4 eventually, then a takes b, a takes b, I think would be beneficial for me because I have a rook on a1. So it would activate my pieces. This knight on f4 is interesting. I think it's pretty well located because it's it's looking towards the, the king side. It's, it's near the king side. So I have to bring a rook, I think. If I bring this rook to the king side, then it might be scarier. So as I said, I'm going to take with the a pawn first, a takes, and now I have an extra option of using my, my a file, which wouldn't have been possible against rook e3, b4, for instance. So I play in this position, rook e3, b4, that wouldn't, that wouldn't have been possible. So I'm already happy about that. That being said, black did end up uh, executing their plan successfully, so I must watch out. But now I think it's time to throw a pawn storm. So I have the idea of playing g5. I'm going to take after this, of course. My pawns are, well, the weakness on c3 is definitely there. But what I'm claiming is that, oh my goodness. What I'm claiming is that my rook on e3 is going to be an attack, an offensive piece and a defensive piece of c3. So I'm not too worried about that. Now my opponent is saying, David, you blundered this because knight takes g4. If you take, I take your knight and you might be losing. But I think that my opponent forgot or didn't consider that after bishop takes h7, king takes h7, knight takes g4, the queen can no longer take because I have rook h3. So that's the first thing that comes to my mind. The second thing is just to play rook h3. Um, because after knight takes e5, let's say, or knight takes the, or this knight takes e5, I have bishop takes h7. So I'm trying to figure out how to do it, and I'm, I'm also kind of, I have to hurry up, because um, I don't have infinite time. Hmm... It's very interesting. I want to take, take, and then take. But I feel like keeping the tension in some way is better. I just don't know exactly how. I'm running out of time. That's why I'm going to play. Rook h3 is very tempting. I'm going to play this. Make this move now. I think with two knights near my opponent's king, my opponent should be a little bit scared. And I think my plan is going to be something like king h1. 
group G1, and then I make use of all my pieces. Which is something you should always try to do when you're playing. Of course, you're, you're trying to do that. One of my threats is rook h3, king g8, and knight f6. Because after it takes, I have something like king h1 or, or, or some sort of um, move like that. So I'm going to play knight e5. Now there's a big hole. Queen e7 would be losing to rook h3 and knight g6. Difficult to know where to put the queen. Queen c5, probably the best try. But after rook h3, king, king g8... King King H1, for instance, and Rook G1, it looks pretty scary. So I should be on top. Maybe I should, shouldn't rush with Rook H3, by the way. Queen C5, maybe King H1. The, the threat is stronger than the execution. That's something you're going to hear a lot. So maybe Rook G1. Exactly, so King G8 happened anyway. So maybe I want my Rook, instead of H3, Rook on G3 now. That's why this move is now... Pretty useful. So let's put that. Let's make let's make that happen. Let's play knight h5, attacking this again. So g6 and queen h6 would be already. I mean g6, knight f6 also working. I mean g6, um, everything works. Everything seems to work. I think I would play knight f6 just for simplicity. I like my position. Yeah. So attacking this. Now I think that queen h... Oh my goodness. Still have to watch out because this bishop wanted to play d4. That would have been... <laughs> that would have been bad news. So I'm going to play this. Play that. Could have taken the rook. But I want my knight on f6. And I think I can sacrifice my queen. Can't I? I should have taken on d4 first, by the way. But I might be just winning. King f7, rook g7, I think this is mate. And it makes sense that there's su such a tactic. It's not like it's it's just brilliant to play this. With such a king on, 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 on f7 and g7, it makes sense that my rooks, my knights, everything's around my opponent's king. So, And if you look at black's pieces, everything's in the queen side. So, queen takes g7, I didn't calculate everything until the end, but it felt like there must be something. And, well, yeah. I was right. It just makes sense. It's, it's something that you develop through time. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it or if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and have a nice day.